Hey, my friends, um, and it's been a while since I made one of these. Um, I started this channel to document my experience dabbling in this new sport of cycling and today I have uploaded a couple of videos highlighting some of these experiences. Um, there's a video of me documenting the first year of cycling and there's another one in the second year as well. I'm also into Zwift, um, racing online and that's been a huge factor to continue training and getting stronger. So as you can tell, a huge part of this channel is about performance and that's what today's video is all about. 2023 has been a fun second year of cycling. I participated in the Taiwan KOM, took a solo cycling trip exploring South Korea, trained hard for another season of the Zwift Racing League and managed to make improvements to certain aspects of my cycling performance. And after two years of cycling, I could feel that I was at the tail end of my beginner's gains in 2023. My threshold power peaked at around 320 watts at 79 kg last year. And that was just a byproduct of going all in with uh, my VO2 max sessions. Following the polarized training model, I did not include any tempo or threshold work in my workouts. I knew that my 5 minute power was lacking, so I kept hammering it um, in the months leading to the Zwift Racing League. I managed to hit 350 watts in my 5x5 intervals but I had to let everything go in the process. Uh, that includes strength training. Those sessions were truly brutal and I dread hopping onto the trainer on interval days. Uh, not only were these VO2 max intervals brutal, um, but progress also slowed towards the end when I hit the 350 watts mark. Which is probably a combination of fatigue, diminished returns and staleness after months of um, VO2 max training. I burned out a few times last year and I know that this way of training wasn't going to be sustainable in the long run. After riding out my beginner's gains in these two years, I decided to periodize my training uh, this year. I like the idea of taking some time off the bike and um, dedicating time to every power zone leading to a peak condition. Hopefully this could be a more sustainable way to continue getting stronger and breaking plateaus. I took a few weeks break after the Zwift Racing League and the first training phase of the periodization model begins with two months of strength training. And if you're like me, you've probably watched um, Dylan's breakdown of how it can benefit cyclists. The presentation was crystal clear and I probably have nothing to add in that context. Personally, I miss lifting weights and I know that I can potentially stretch out the power zones if I can actually become stronger. That means regaining the strength that I've lost during the past few months and gaining even more strength in these two months. Two months is a very short time and I don't want to waste time over complicating training. To build strength, you need to lift heavy. To grow, you need to expose your body to stress it's never experienced before. That's it. There's no need to scooby do around with the kettlebell for 15 minutes. I'm not an advanced weightlifter, so if you're like me, there are a lot of easy strength gains from just doing compound exercises like um, squats and deadlifts. Monday, Wednesday and Friday are my lifting days. My main lifts are the hack squat, front squat, deadlift, clean pull and the power clean. So the hack squat is a strange inclusion from the usual compound lifts. I bought this machine when I hurt my back last year doing the back squat. That was quite a terrifying experience and it was entirely my fault. Uh, I was rushing through the warm up and I didn't properly brace at the lowest point. I love this machine and it conveniently became a confidence builder as well. In the beginning, I would do 3 sets of 5 on the hack squat, increasing the weight over time to progressively overload. As I got stronger and more confident, I went back to the barbell compound exercises, started throwing in the front squat, um, the clean high pulls, power cleans, hang cleans and deadlifts into the mix. These exercises are slightly more technical but they help to develop coordination and stability which are absent with the hack squat machine. It also adds a bit of variety to the sessions, creating new stimuli for the body to adapt to and making these sessions um, a lot more enjoyable. So there you have it, um, that's everything I did in the two months of strength training, mostly strength training and a bit of power centric exercises. I try to avoid using numbers because I don't like the idea of comparison. Um, everyone is different and we are all at different stages of progress. However, numbers determine results. If you could squat 20 kilos more than when you started, you have made progress. The hack squat, for example, I started with um, 70 kg plus however heavy it is unloaded. I ended with 115 kilos at the end. I suspect that the hack squat also improved my front squat numbers. I went from barely lifting 100 kilos to lifting it for 4 sets of 5 towards the end. I was hoping to power clean uh, 100 kilos but I was terrified to go under the bar. I caught a full clean at 90 kilos but botched the power clean at the same weight because um, I wasn't tense enough at the rack position. So all in all, uh, still not strong but 
definitely gotten stronger. I guess the real question in these two months is how much fitness did I lose? The effects of strength training um, aren't going to be immediately obvious and will come in the later stages of training, especially at the more intense sessions uh, where aerobic meets uh, anaerobic. However, the lack of volume and intensity is definitely going to affect my performance on the bicycle. I kept cycling to just 6 to 7 hours in that first month and did a ramp up to 10 hours in the second month. On top of that, most rides are either in zone 1 or 2, except for maintenance ride on Sunday. I took a ramp test at the end of these 3 months of time off and the drop in performance wasn't that awful to be honest, I was expecting a lot worse. The ramp test gave me an FTP of 308 watts at 82 kilos. That is a 5% drop after almost 3 months of um, riding at low intensity and volume. My weight also increased by 3% but that's also because of the holiday that I took and also being quite relaxed with my diet. Training begins with this number and that's what the test is all about. It's not, it's not a number to boast about and it doesn't say much about you as a cyclist. Um, you can have a really high FTP and still get dropped on the 5 minutes climb. So know your FTP, set up the power zones and we start training from zero again. The plan is to spend the next 3 months building my aerobic base and I'm gonna dedicate more hours than I've ever been on the bike push myself a little harder, get out of that 10 to 12 hours comfort zone and see how it goes. Uh, with a stronger base, the body is then better equipped to handle the more intense sessions in the later months. At least that's what I learned. Uh, I've spent a lot of time listening and learning and now it's the time to put it into practice. I've actually just finished the first meso cycle of the base block and I'm quietly confident, but who knows, I might burn out. I might give up. We'll see. So if you're interested, I've documented every single day of my live training in YouTube shots. Uh, it's less than a minute long and it forces me to be more accountable. And lastly, it's never too late to start something. If you haven't done any strength training before, science guarantees you will come out a healthier, fitter and stronger person. And that's all I've got. Um, till then, I will see you all soon and ride safe and have fun.